In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church design. When we're talking about church design, you need to think little and massive. You need to think what are the features, the small things, the objects that I would see as I go into a church. But then you need to zoom out and think what are the big architectural features that have been designed that are massive? And how does all of this relate to belief? How does stuff relate to belief? And, there, and all of this ties in with everything we've done on the sacraments and mass and salvation. So let's first of all just remind ourselves that there are actually lots of different styles of church designs. The Byzantine style, which was is mainly used in the East and is very much inspired by uh, Greek architecture. There's the Romanesque style from the about a thousand years ago, 11th, 12th century. The Gothic style, which is sort of late late medieval style, and uh, the Renaissance style, which is comes uh, in early 15th century uh, Italian style, uh, very pretty, and the Baroque style, which is again sort of early 17th century Roman style, and there's the Rococo style, which is a, a early 18th century, very flamboyant style of church, and then there's the modern, and um, I'm, I won't share with you my opinion on modern architecture, but this this particular example is a, is Liverpool Catholic Cathedral built in the 60s. We have, a, we have our, one of our a, a modern church here in Preston, very nearby our school, St. Clair's. And modern churches are often round. But we also have lots of, of other churches in Preston, including a, an example of a neoclassical style. So it's it's got that classical, it's been informed by ideas based on ancient Roman and ancient Greek architecture, but it's new. Why is it new? Because Catholics weren't allowed to build churches after the reformation in this country but when we were allowed to build them again in the victorian times thank god uh, we we would take some of those old styles and 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 build them in that way so we have a neoclassical style at saint wilfred's very beautiful church you should go and have a look we've got neo-gothic or gothic revival churches again built in the victorian times in preston when catholics were allowed to worship publicly again this is saint walberg's which is is, is massive third tallest spire in the uk very beautiful church and uh, well, anyway what a lot of these styles have in, in common is a lot of them will be in a cruciform shape you will have learned about that in school and obviously this relates to the belief in salvation which is the death that the, through the death and resurrection of jesus humanity has achieved the possibility of life forever with god you might also have learned that the the fact that the the altar is faces east that the whole church faces east that links to the resurrection and the belief that the rising sun uh, is, is symbolic of Jesus rising, but also that Jesus will come again from the east with the rising sun um, one day. Uh, and, and of course, uh, for, from, from our perspective, Jerusalem is, is, is pretty much eastward as well. So uh, there's a few different features there. Now, the stuff inside a church, the small level stuff, I'm hoping you'll know all this already. We've got the altar, we've got the tabernacle, we've got the baptismal font, we've got the confessional, we've got statues, we've got the, uh, well, what haven't we mentioned, stained glass windows and things like that. You should hopefully have all that. You either know it or you don't at this point. But if we've got a question on... On, uh, on, on this. It could be something like this. Explain how Catholic beliefs are revealed or shown in the design of churches. So we've not got the word architecture in there, though it could be. We've not got the word features or objects, but they, they could be. We've got this word design, which is a nice big word. That, and you can interpret that to mean any of these things. Does it mean the stuff inside a church, like the altar, like the tabernacle? Or does it mean the big things like the cruciform shape, the fact that it faces east, the fact that the nave, the bit where people sit, is often an upside down boat shape? All of that can be used here. But I would say, how should we start? Well, with any question that we get, start with a definition of the subject. Now, the subject of this sentence uh, is Catholic beliefs, but it's about the design of churches, isn't it? So we we need to we need to define church. I would say what is a church in terms of uh, its uh, Catholic beliefs. So my definition of a church is that it's a building which is used for prayer and the sacraments. That's essential. And look, I've used that word sacrament rather than worship or something to really make it clear that this is a Catholic answer here okay i could go into a bit more detail but that's a good a good basis now the rest of my 
answer is going to follow a very simple pattern, which is what feature can you see? And then how does it link to a belief? So what features can you see? And then how does it link to a belief? And then you can do that again and again and again. Try and do it as efficiently as possible without repeating yourself. But then you've, you've got your answer. You've answered the question, surely. So let's have a look at my answer so far. So we've got our definition of a church, but then what would we see? Well, let's list a few of the things. In a Catholic church, you'll see many features which relate to prayer and the sacraments and mass, including the tabernacle and the altar. Then I'm going to choose one of those and go into detail. And I'm going to link it back to Catholic beliefs because that is what the question is about after all. So I'm going to link to a feature, link a feature to a belief. The tabernacle, say what it is, it's a special box found on the sanctuary the back bit where the altar is, which contains the blessed sacrament. Catholics genuflect in front of the tabernacle to show respect for the presence of Jesus, whom they believe is truly there in the form of bread and wine. So I've linked to this belief in, and it's a belief in transubstantiation, isn't it? So if I was going to improve this paragraph, I could try and get that word transubstantiation in there or the word mass or the word consecration or the word last supper or something like that. But anyway, I've, this, this structure is good, so I'm going to repeat it. I've done a small thing. I've done something I'd find inside the church. So now I'm going to uh, talk about other features I would see, but a bigger scale, more architectural things. The boat-like nave, the nave's the bit where people sit, remember? And, and if you look at the ceiling of a nave, it's often, it does remind us of an upturned boat. So the boat-like nave, the cruciform shape, as I've shown you before, the, the fact that many churches in all, the, all these different styles do look like a cross when you look from, from above. And the east-facing orientation of many churches also reflect Catholic beliefs about salvation. So again, I've linked back to the question to beliefs. Just the same pattern. What I'm going to do now is zoom into one of these and say, why? So uh, link a feature to a belief. I'm going to choose nave on this occasion, and I'm going to go into some detail about it. The nave, for example, so I'm using that same sentence structure as I did earlier. The nave, for example, reminds us of Noah's Ark, which God used to save Noah's family when he wanted to wash sin away from the world. I've used this Bible reference, Noah's Ark. I've used the word God. I've used the word save which is related to salvation. And I've used the word wash sin. Now, the fact that I've talked about washing sin away should remind me of something else, which I could improve this answer with as well. But I'm going to go on to say what this means. So this reflects the belief. Belief is a word from the question, so I want to use it. This reflects the belief that the Catholic Church is the ark that saves us from sin. It's as simple as that. It also reminds us that the apostles were fishermen, not all of them, but some of them were fishermen chosen by Jesus to become fishers of men who would bring all humanity back to God through the boat of the church. So the, the, the name is a good one to choose because there's lots of connections we can make. This answer is good. We've used this structure. If we defined what church is. We've said what we would see, we've linked it to a belief. We've said what we would see, we've linked it to a belief. And you could keep going with this, but try to use good vocab. Now, can we improve this answer? Of course we can, but we can still use the same structure. What's a church? Name a feature, link it to a belief, name a feature, link it to a belief, and so on. I'm going to improve my opening sentence now by squeezing a quote in there. Because really, churches, they are for prayer, they're for the sacraments. The most important sacrament is, is, is the Eucharist. The Eucharist happens in mass, which is the source of something of life. It's heaven on earth. So we could say something like that, couldn't we? We could say Catholic churches are sacred buildings. Oh, I've used the word sacred this time rather than just building. Sacred buildings used for prayer, the sacraments, and most importantly, holy mass, which is the source and summit of life. So I've set off nicely there, getting a quote in. And then rather than just mentioning a couple of features, I've gone and just listed as many as I can here, including those that altar and tabernacle, but also all the others, because I really am here just saying, look, everything, everything relates to Catholic beliefs. Absolutely everything does. So let's show off and, and use as much, uh, use as many of those good words as we can. But then we do the same structure. We're going to choose one of them. We'll choose the tabernacle again. We'll say what it is. But I've managed to add in here. I said, didn't I? Let's get that word transubstantiation in. So we're going to do that. And whenever we're using the word transubstantiation, let's add in this little phrase at the moment of consecration. Another big word, another good bit of our vocab, and it makes sense. So it now says, Catholics genuflect in front of the tabernacle to show respect for the presence of Jesus, whom they believe is truly there in the form of bread and wine, which has become his body and blood through transubstantiation at the moment of consecration. Far more sophisticated answer here, and it's 
using that good vocab. So do you remember what we do next? We've said what our church is. We've named a feature. Linked to a belief, we're going to name another feature. Just like we did before, <coughs> excuse me, we'll mention the big things now, the architectural things. The boat-like nave, the cruciform shape, and the east-facing orientation of many churches also reflect Catholic beliefs about salvation. Now, that's where we stopped it last time. But if we're going to use that keyword salvation, say what the keyword is if we haven't done already. We might as well. So what is salvation? It's the belief that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, humanity has achieved the possibility of life forever with God. Good. What do we do next? Well, we've, we've said what churches, we've named a feature, we've linked it to a belief, we've named a feature. In fact, we've named a few features. Now we're going to link it to a belief. So again, go into detail with the nave, just like we did before. But why not make that link with baptism really obvious since we mentioned it? As I said, whenever we mention washing and sin, anything to do with water and sin, you've got to think straight away, baptism. OK, so get that in there. This links to baptism, which washes sin away. All right, done. So that pattern, I would say, is a good one. If you are using it as a medium for getting across good key vocab, use of keywords, couple of quotes, maybe, um, and... Um, uh, always link it back to the question or always link back to the question which is always about catholic beliefs now there's so much so much more you could say about about church design and what churches are like i highly would like to promote this great video which i watched called a protestant so a non-catholic christian so he doesn't believe in the sacraments really certainly not mass tours a catholic cathedral this is great protestant man called, i can't remember his name but he runs a youtube channel called the 10 minute bible hour and he goes into a catholic church for half an hour and the priest talks to him about the different features of the church and how they link to catholic beliefs and just as for your own uh, interest and and education i highly recommend uh, his his channel and that particular video which will help you because he's an outsider. So again, he's he's learning about the tip from a non-Catholic point of view, which I think is very helpful and good. Right. Good luck.